man, what the hell am I going to do for this 150th episode? Having some trouble, dude? Dude, you're alive? Hmm? Why wouldn't I be alive? Maybe because that guy shot you in the head? <laughs> dude, that wasn't me. That was Greg. Greg? You know, Greg. Hi. CGI stunt double. CGI stunt double? Yeah, dude. Check this out. <laughs> See? But you've been gone for a month. The, the, that video on the computer. The, that ass all over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Hey, Action. Thanks for looking after Doug. And I've got your payment right here. One copy of Simon Says. Simon Says. <gasps> Whew! It's got Dennis Rodman and Dane Cook. Now that's a match made in heaven. Pleasure doing business with you, Grant. Action, out! Well, we had to do something special for the 150th episode. Can, can you believe this guy? What an ingrate. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learning good. Hard to believe, but I've said that 150 times. My God. Damn right, Lawrence, because that is no mean feat. And I want to thank every single one of you for watching the show and helping us get to that 150. So as you guys have no doubt guessed, mainly because I told you in the vlog last week, that our 150th episode will be the first of a three-part series on building your very own CGI stunt double. Now, why is it in three parts? Because it's not easy to do and it takes a long time, okay? Just telling it like it is, gang. Having said that, the first part is pretty easy, and that's building the model itself in Adobe Fuse. So if you haven't heard of Adobe Fuse, it's basically a 3D avatar maker that's in its beta testing now in your Creative Cloud subscription. It's intended for you to make the models and then take them into Photoshop and use them there, but there's another option for these models and that's exporting them to a site called Mixamo and adding some sweet motion capture data right onto those models. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now in order to complete your model, you'll need a copy of Creative Cloud and Adobe Fuse. So be sure and download it if you haven't. Secondly, I would recommend taking two pictures of the person you intend to make the double of. Firstly, a front-facing photo, and secondly, a side-facing photo. Uh, kinda like a mugshot. Hopefully in this case, it'll be better looking than that. Damn. Apart from that, you won't need anything else until we reach part two, which we'll be covering retexturing that model, lighting, and maybe playing around with some facial expression animation. Finally, we'll composite the model into our shot using After Effects, and our journey will come to an end. So, how about we stop farting around and get this 150th episode started? Okay gang, here we are in Adobe Fuse. Now the first thing you'll see is these four bits of text right up here. Assemble, Customize, Clothing, and Texture. These are the four steps of modeling within Fuse. Over here we have our controls. The first is our pan and zoom tool. This allows us to move around the model in a 2D perspective. The second is the rotate and zoom, and that allows us to, you guessed it, rotate around our character in 3D. And below that is the center camera button, just in case you get a bit too screwy with the controls above there, and it'll just bring it back to the original position. And the arrow tool here allows us to select different parts of our model individually. And the last icon allows us to edit the geometry of the model directly. So let's start assembling our character. And naturally, we're going to start at the top of our head. As you can see over here, we have a bunch of different heads to select from. So let's try and find one that looks like my egg-headed mug. This one looks pretty good. And don't worry if it doesn't match 100%, because what are we going to be doing? We're going to be customizing that model a lot more in the next stage. From there, of course, comes our torso. Let's grab one that matches my glistening six pack. This one looks pretty cool. Yep, exactly like mine. <laughs> yeah, right. Now we've got the torso, we've got the head, and say we want to skip picking out the rest of these body parts because it's getting boring, we can just click on the leg here that matches our body type and select add matching parts, and bam, we've got ourselves a complete body model. But just for the tutorial's sake, let's just show you how to add them individually because it's really not that hard. All we need to do is select the arm menu, add an arm, this one looks pretty good. Head down to the leg menu and add ourselves a leg. See, that was about as difficult as, I don't know, writing that Jake Paul Everyday Bro song. God damn! Now our next step is the customize menu. 
This is where we can really dig deep and adjust nearly every aspect of our character. And not only that, we also get to see those changes take place in real time, which is very, very handy. Now guys, you can skip this step entirely if you are happy with how the model looks, but because we're trying to customize this to look like ourselves, why would we do that? So let's get into it. So let's click on customize. And now, as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of different body parts. And when we open them by clicking the drop down icon here, you get a bunch of sliders to control the different parameters of our muscle groups. For example, our first set of sliders is our arm controls. So say you want nice big biceps like a certain egg headed internet show host, then just grab that slider and push them up and watch them gains grow. Nice. You've got four arms like a bear? Well, sure thing. So you get the idea, really. We can customize the arms, the hands, the shoulders, the wrists, all the way down to your little fingers. And as you can see, our next item on our customization menu is the face. Now guys, this is where you can really give your character a little personality. Say you're a little awkward like me, I know, it's a shock, then bump that slider up. Or maybe you're a little bit angry with a side of confused. Basically, you can mix and match your expression to find what you like. Now, me personally, I'm gonna zero all of these out because I plan on animating the face myself later on. And these are more for folks who want that face to remain static. Now, moving on to the head. And this is the part you're gonna spend your most amount of time on because in this section, you can really define how your character's facial features look. And there is a lot of features within that head from the eyebrows to the jawline to the nose, the eyes, the mouth, the lips, the goddamn ick. If you can name it, you can change it, seriously. Now guys, I'm just gonna speed this whole thing up because this took a long time for me to really get satisfied with the way the model looks. And one thing to keep in mind, you are never really gonna get this thing to a point where it looks like your long lost twin brother. You can get it to a good approximate of yourself, but don't go into this program thinking you're going to make yourself a complete 100% digital double to the very finest detail because it's not going to happen and you don't need it to happen for a CGI stunt double. Now, while you were at doing all these things, you may have noticed this little die here with the words randomize. Now, if you click that, it'll just throw up a bunch of customized features for you. And so this is handy if you want, say, individual characters and you don't have the time to model them all from scratch. But for me, this is pretty damn pointless if you're building a double. But hey, if you're building these models to say, place them in a whole crowd scene, and you don't wanna go nuts just modeling a whole bunch of individual characters, this might come in handy. Now guys, while we were talking about that, I've gone ahead and finished the head of my model. As you can see, it resembles me a little bit more now. And if I covered every individual slider that got me to this point, we'd be here forever. So guys, I highly encourage you to experiment with every single slider, see what they do, and then use those reference pictures that you've taken of your side and your front of your face and match your CG model to your face as best you can. Now the last few menus are teeth, legs and torso. They all control the same as the menus above, so by all means have a play around and see what works for you. But just make sure you don't skip legs, because you never skip leg day. Very important. So guys, you can clearly see you have a ton of latitude to take that base character model and put your own spin on it. Or just hit that randomize button and let the program do the work if you're a lazy bum. But that does bring us to the next section, clothing. And just like with our model section, you have a bunch of choices for clothes to dress your new boy or girl up with. So let's just pick a shirt. Well, that'll do. Next in line, bottoms. You can see where this is going, right? For those of you with hair, you bastards, you can pick a hairstyle, a hat, glasses, say all the way down to facial hair and more. And your end result should look like this. No, 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 not that, not that, M more like this. Now I will mention that the clothing part of Fuse is pretty limited as far as the clothing items go. I wish they had a hoodie or maybe even just a plain, you know, t-shirt, but for some reason that isn't there. Now of course there is the possibility of downloading the content creator pack and modeling your own clothes using their base mesh, but for the purposes of the tutorial, let's just use what we've got right here. Now our last step is the texture menu. Now guys, this menu is for adding finer details to your models such as skin color, eye color, tweaking that facial hair, variations in the skin, and say changing the color or the clothing to something you may prefer. 
To change the color of the clothing, for instance, we simply click on the clothing we want to change, and just like with the customize menu, we've got some other options over here on the right hand side. So as you can see, and I feel like I've said that how many different times, we have different parts of the leather jacket, and we also have our shirt that's underneath the jacket. So let's click on the shirt underneath and change the color. And here's our color wheel. So I might just pick a green. See, it's as easy as that. To change, say, your eye color, all we have to do is click our face, head to the eye menu, and click our iris color. The color wheel comes up once more, and I think I'll make my eyes brown. All done. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the hair, and the facial hair from my model too. Just for posterity, because I don't want anyone saying, there's hair on your model, there's no hair on your head. Now guys, there is loads more customization you can do here, so feel free to jump in and try them all out. Now before we export, we gotta do one final thing. We gotta turn up the resolution of all of these textures. Because if we go up here and check it out, the skin is set to 512 by 512. So let's hit the drop down menu and crank that up as high as it can go. This will give us a much better looking model and a lot more wiggle room when we import it to Cinema 4D later. So once we're happy with our finished model, let's head up to the top right corner and click Save to CC Libraries. That way you can download and edit your model anywhere and anytime, or even export it into Photoshop and start animating there. But that's if you want to work with the model in Photoshop. Now since we want to add our motion capture data to the model, let's hit the other button that says Save to Mixamo. Now guys, what this will do is send the model to the Mixamo server and start the auto rigging process. That's right, you don't have to rig the model. Mixamo will do it for you in real time and you can actually see it happen. How cool is that? Now one thing I will mention about the auto rigging is that by default the face will not be rigged. So we need to hit this drop down menu and actually select that the face be rigged as well. That way it'll refresh the auto rig and your face will actually be rigged for animation later on. Now once all the auto rigging's done, Mixamo will open up and you will see a bunch of motion capture data that you can apply to your model all down this side. And say you want to apply one of these, all you have to do is just highlight it and double click and it'll apply it to your model and you can actually see your model performing that motion capture data. Super cool. Now if you don't see anything that you like on this side, all you have to do is just scroll on up to the search bar and just click and you'll see a whole bunch of different genres. You've got combat, adventure, sport, dance, fantasy, superhero, business and skinning test. But you can also just hit all and you'll be able to scroll through every single motion capture animation that they have here. Now just because I'm a sadist and a bit of a sickie, I'm gonna type in dying in the search bar and let's just look up a whole bunch of dying animations. Ooh, I like this one here. So I'm just gonna click it and I'm gonna apply that one to my character. Oh, <laughs> that looks pretty damn cool. And if you wanna check it out at a couple of different angles, you can always use the controls down here in the preview menu. You've got a rotate, so you can just rotate in 3D space. You've also got the, the pan and zoom tools over here as well. But since I am happy with the animation, I'm just gonna head up here and hit add to my assets. From there, I'm gonna head up to the top menu and hit my assets, head down and hit my animations. And you can now see that that motion capture data has been baked into our model and is ready for download. So all you have to do is just select it, make sure it's all ticked and hit Q download. This will bring up the download settings menu and you wanna hit the format is FBX. We wanna make sure it's with skin and let's hit that frames per second down to 24. And then all we're gonna do is just hit the Q download. This will open up the my download section and you'll see your model will be processing for a little bit and then that processing will turn to a download button. You hit that It'll prompt you with a download window that'll come up and then you'll save your model. And once it's downloaded, we'll jump into Cinema 4D and start playing around. Now guys, there is a bit of work in getting these models looking even better than they do right now, but in the end, it's totally worth it. So stick around for part two and we're really gonna make this thing look cooler. Add up all those steps and your model goes from this base model to this gorgeous specimen of a human being. So guys, that's part one of our CGI stunt double series. As I said in the vlog last week, Part two will be a couple of weeks away as I have to finish my road reel short and I have some paid gigs I have to finish up too. I'll also be heading up to Sydney to the YouTube space at the end of the month as I figured out how to do it within my budget. So that's gonna be awesome. 
As always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you want to support the channel, our highest level on Patreon is still only $1. And I've got two other film learning episodes over here. Social media crap is above my head as always. Until part two hits, this was the 150th episode and keep learning.